Five years ago, in Lanark, the town where William Wallace lived, we started an event called the Lanark Medieval Festival. Five years ago, we had a small half-day event. Now it's mushroomed to the largest event of its kind north of Yorkshire, with more than 500 reenactors from 10 countries taking part. We have had members involved in the organisation right from the start, and it has really grown from our group is mainly, as, it, as is the name, medieval, but we also do the Viking period as well, so we have people who are changing quickly from Viking costume to medieval in order to take part in battles. Uh, but we also uh, dabble in other periods, so some of us have Roman costumes, Jacobite costumes, uh, and uh, even ones for Mary Queen of Scots period. Nowadays it's no longer a simply a medieval event, now it's what is called a multi-period event. It covers the Romans, it covers the Vikings, it covers the medieval era, it can cover the 17th century and even right up to the Napoleonic Wars era. All of which, all of which at some point or other, have got direct links to Lanark and Lanarkshire. The Romans first came up into this area of Scotland in 79 AD, which was the year that uh, Vesuvius erupted and completely obliterated Pompeii and Herculaneum. Uh, the Romans moved up through the Clyde Valley, through central Scotland into Fife, and they moved further so north into the Highlands. They built um, various forts and they built a wall across uh, Scotland called the Antonine Wall. The reenactors we have here, these are people who have studied, studied hard, they have done an awful lot of research, so that they, everything that you see here today is as authentic as they can make it. Their costume, they have gone and looked at old books, at manuscripts, old Bibles, they have checked these records so that they can then recreate the costume. They have done the same with things like their tent, they've discovered through old manuscripts how the people lived in those days, what they ate, how they lived, fought, and that is why we have this authenticity today. I'm here with Dram Broder, a group from Leicester. And as you've just seen, we've uh, had a battle. And you see me put all my, my clothing on there. Um, the armour starts from the bottom. You saw I had uh, metal splints on my legs to protect the shins. Uh, and as we move up from there, I then start to be covered by a suit of chain mail. It covers the whole of my upper body down to about the knees. Uh, and on top of that, a suit of lamella. Uh, it's very heavy, small plates that, that line up all tied together with, with leather. Helmet on top of that, um, and that's all your, your armour together. That set of kit altogether weighs in the region of 10 stone. In those days, you had big, large encampments where the people lived, where they ate, where they traded. In an event like this today, we have all sorts of different encampments all on the one side, you, you push, you find nowhere else. What we're showing here is the way that Vikings would live and we're wearing costumes that are traditional, so made out of linen and in fact we've also got some flax that uh, of course linen is made from and we can, uh, we're showing how that flax was used to make our clothes and we've got lots of wool as well for our cloaks should the, uh, should the uh, uh, rain come on. Um, and uh, we've got things like uh, made out of wood and metal and all sorts of materials that Vikings used, including soapstone for the bowls to uh, cook things in and um, uh, lots of things that have been made actually um, in the way, as far as we can, that Vikings would have done. On the Atlantic, at the Medieval Festival, we have a wide, wide range of things from fierce battles featuring Vikings right through to medieval battles. One, in fact, is going on beside me. You can hear them in the background. So there are cannon displays, there are displays of carbines from the, Medi from the Napoleonic Wars. We have a medieval herbalist who will teach you all about medicine from those days. We have a jester, a jester who is Europe's leading jester. There is falconry. There's a wide, wide range of things. We're here today as uh, the band called Truver. We're a band of authentic medieval minstrels. We travel all over the country, uh, all the way through the year, really. And Lanark's one of our favourite events. It's actually the third year that we've been here. One of the pieces that I've been playing on my harp today is called Dulce Scotia, Sweet Scotland. And this was written uh, about Scotland at the time of the Wars of Independence. So just about right for the event that we're doing here this weekend. Midgard is one of um, a number of local societies that together form the Vikings. 
and um, lots of groups come from different parts of the country to this kind of gathering and people meet up and they trade and they uh, teach and find out about the way that Vikings live and um, that's partly how we've acquired many of the pieces and things that we've got here. Some of them are made by craftspeople who are, have been at events like this and demonstrating how they've produced things using very traditional techniques and partly by doing that learning how Vikings did live. We're still looking forward, we're already preparing for next year. Next year we're hoping to have horses, bigger battles, more traders, more entertainment and just a larger, greater event for all the public to enjoy.